is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. There's fresh calls tonight for an additional 300 medical professionals to be immediately employed to provide Tasmanians with more emergency care. The health union claims a man taken by ambulance to the Launceston General Hospital yesterday had to wait outside for half an hour as there was no room for him to be treated inside. The flu season is over, but the health union claims ambulance ramping is only getting worse. The latest episode occurring at the Launceston General Hospital yesterday. We had nine ambulances ramped uh, and as a result of that uh, we actually had the situation where a paramedic had to sit with a patient outside the LGH here. Here, uh, waiting to just get inside. The Premier says he's looking into the claim but was quick to take aim at the union. They're increasingly becoming political activists, there's no doubt. Um, they've got a very strong bent to the Labor Party. It'll often be the case that uh, ramping does occur, particularly when there's a surge in patient demand. We need to respond to that and we have done at the LGH. Earlier this year it was announced beds on Ward 4D would stay open permanently to help ease hospital pressure. The union says yesterday's ramping incident proves more needs to be done. If this isn't a crisis I don't know what is. This is totally unacceptable. The health minister needs to stop denying that there is a crisis, accept it and listen to the experts. They're calling for 250 new nurses, for 80 new paramedics uh, so that we can actually address the crisis we have here. Well we are uh, recruiting more, um, we are putting more health professionals into our system. It's the, the benefit of getting our budget back on track. The union says the man in his 40s who had to wait outside here in the waiting bay is now reportedly fine, but they fear the situation could have been much worse. The state government has promised to employ an additional 350 Tasmanian medical practitioners within the next four years. Monika Dadsen at Southern Cross News. Young Tasmanians fear they are being left behind and facing a life of unemployment and disadvantage. That's the result of a new Mission Australia report, finding increased use of drugs and alcohol contributes to their angst. For Emily White, growing up in Clarendon Vale presented challenges. When people look at Clarendon Vale, they think, oh my God, that's the central of drugs and alcohol and violence. And to be honest, sometimes it can be. Now 20, the full-time primary school teacher says it's a different story for many young people in the area. I could have gone either way a few years ago. I could have went downhill like, you know, other people did or, you know, where I am now. A Mission Australia survey of 15 to 19 year olds finding the major concerns for the cohorts surround alcohol and drugs, equality and discrimination and mental health. Youth from low socio-economic communities fearing for their future in a cycle of disadvantage. The seeds of change I think exist in every community. So it's just about tapping into that, to understand what the community wants, to help them build their self-belief that change is possible. The report recommends tailoring place-based services to boost community outcomes. If you've got something based in the community, people get to know you, they get to trust you, and they're more likely to seek help and assistance from you. Our jobless youth rate remaining amongst the worst in the country at 24% behind South Australia and Victoria. Our focus is very much on giving young people their, their best education, uh, in providing them with their best opportunities for a job once they finish school. I really do believe governments are hearing the message. Whether that's translating to, to funding or not remains to be seen. Helping youth to achieve now a passion for Emily. I want to strive to you know, push that message to you know, just be confident in yourself and don't doubt that you can't do something when you know, it's always good to try. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Lawyers for TASSAL are considering whether expert evidence will be called in to support its current federal court case over farming operations at Oakhampton Bay. Environmentalists joined with two tourism operators taking TASSAL and the Federal Environment Minister Josh Frydenberg to court over environmental and tourism concerns. The development was given the go-ahead by the federal government in I August. Think you should have upheld the interests of the environment and therefore the public interest. But that's a matter now for the court to determine in February. Tassau says the applicants changed their claims since the last hearing, providing insufficient time to address them. The next hearing is set for November 8, with the trial expected to begin in February.
April midnight Wednesday, Tasmania Fire Service has declared a fire permit period for much of the state, following a spate of serious bushfires over the last two weeks. Tasmania Fire Service says landowners in southern Tasmania and parts of the north will require permits for vegetation burns. Further information can be found on the TFS website. Hospitality professionals say the number of young Tasmanians entering the industry is rapidly declining. To help turn the trend around, a new initiative has been launched, giving teenagers a first-hand look at the industry and the jobs on offer. If you're a teenager still trying to decide a career path, then these could be the jobs for you. Everything from mocktail making to cupcake dressing and even finding out what it takes to be a tour guide put on display at today's first TAS TAFE showcase. We're finding from our schools that students don't understand the range and the diversity of jobs in the industry. So we thought, well, what a great idea is to bring them all together, bring industry in uh, through Drysdale so they can see the educational pathways into those jobs. We've got industry professionals having a chat with our young people to really tell them about their story and how they got to the position that they're in now. Those in the hospitality and tourism industry say the sectors are thriving, but the state is struggling to keep up with demand. I think they often think it's a short-term career um, and we want to really change that mindset that it, there are plenty of long-term um, careers out there that they can take. Many of the 140 students say they've never really thought of a hospitality or tourism career. Not before but now it's been really thinking about it, yeah. Being here today is kind of like showing me what is actually available in it, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. They're trying to get into chef courses and stuff like that. The showcase is expected to become a regular event. Monika Dadson, Southern Cross News. Hundreds of Hobart students have today witnessed some incredible science experiments from a well-known physicist. Clarence High School was the winner of the National Big Science Competition with the prize an entertaining show from the surfing scientist. It's schooling and entertainment at its finest. A balloon in a kettle, one of today's experiments. This physicist demonstrating how this balloon will stay intact in boiling water, but not in front of a laser. One, two, I like science just because it's sort of that never ending thing. There's always something new to explore or like people are discovering new things every day. Year 7 to 10, Clarence High students were lucky draw prize winners in the National Big Science Competition. And their prize? Science performer Reuben Meerman. You can tell the kids who come in thinking, oh, you know, I'm not into science very much, and when they all leave pumped on, you know, seeing laser beams and stuff, it's a good feeling. It promotes problem solving, thinking outside the box. It opens up a lot of doors for our students of whatever they want to do in their lives. Students wowed with light beams, inspiring the next generation. Don't point them at your eyes because they'll blind you if they're a powerful one. But then they're also used for all this amazing stuff like uh, figuring out how far away the moon is. That mind blowing feeling that you get when you discover something new and how something works in the world. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Tasmanians who are yet to lodge a tax return for the last financial year only have a week left to do so. The Australian Taxation Office says around 6% of Tasmanians still need to lodge their return. Penalties may apply if the October 31 deadline is not met. You can lodge your return online using MyTax or by visiting a tax agent. Those having difficulties should contact the ATO. Now we'll look at the day's business and finance with thanks to Tasplan, your local super fund. The share market has overcome a soft start to close slightly higher as strength among miners and utility companies offset weakness for the energy producers. The ASX 200 index has risen by 3.6 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 78.11 US cents and 66.43 euro cents. Aussie wicketkeeper Matthew Wade will be looking to lift the Tasmanian Tigers, heading into his first class debut with the squad. The Tigers are in Western Australia for its opening Sheffield Shield clash of the season as Wade faces uncertainty ahead of the Ashes series. If he was feeling uneasy about speculation over his test career, it wasn't showing. Matthew Wade heading west for his debut with the Tigers. 
my 110 games into a first class career and I'm going to make a debut so that'll be an interesting feeling but yeah looking forward to just just getting in there and trying to win games to be honest. Tassie facing Western Australia in their opening shield clash this week. Wade hoping to be part of the new 13 man mix to lift the Tigers out of a one day series slump. We've done some really good stuff through the week we had a bit of extra time um, you know to plan for what we want to do in Perth uh, and then we get there today train tomorrow night under lights and kick off on Thursday. Needing to deliver runs for Tassie to prove his ashes worth, Wade wasn't buying in to his test match uncertainty. I won't be putting too much pressure on myself, it's just about me going out and performing, doing the way, doing the things that I've always done for a long period of time now, so um, yeah, I suppose it's mine to lose. The Hobart Hurricanes Academy squad also lining up for an interstate challenge. The quadrangular series in Sydney, a big bash training run with four Canes players joining the list of young guns. We obviously want to see some good performances from our more experienced players, but I'd love to see some of our younger players just come out um, and ma maybe just show us something that we haven't seen before. The Hurricanes campaign begins tomorrow. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Two inspiring men in their 90s have proved age is nothing but a motivator, both pushing themselves to the limit and competing in the Australian Masters Games. He's a true testament to it's never too late. At 92, Roger Churchwood has more stamina than most. In a thrilling, heart-pounding finish, the oldest runner on the field made it through the 1500 metre race in the Australian Master Games. Exhausted. It, uh, more exhausted than the 5000 metres two years ago. Young at heart, he has proved age is nothing but a number. I mean, it's quite all right growing old as long as you stay young. And he's not alone. 93-year-old Ted Mule is the oldest participant in this year's Games and will be making his debut. He has one message. Get off your bum and do something. Yeah, be active. Get away from the telly. <laughs> Get outside and do something. The Hobart man considers himself lucky being able to compete in the sailing race at his age. But I try to keep myself busy. I don't like sitting down. I play table tennis twice a week, I play golf once a week, and I sail once a week. The rest of the time I'm in the workshop fiddling. Sailing is one of 47 sports taking place across 70 venues in the northwest as part of the Australian Master Games. More than 2,000 Tasmanians have already participated. The games will run until Saturday. Rita Risk, Southern Cross News. Good evening. Hobart and Devonport, 17 degrees today. Launceston and Burnie, 21. Now, that was the state's high, shared with Wynyard and Eddieston Point. Campania, 20. Bushy Park and Scottsdale, 19. Grove, 18 today. Flinders Island, Friendly Beaches and Lowhead, 17. King Island, Strawn and Lyawini, 15 degrees. Low cloud did move over Tasmania with a few showers in the westerly airstream, but mostly over the west and early in the day. Tomorrow's chart shows us that a high pressure zone will move over the bight. That cold front will be well east of Tasmania with another high to our north. A few cold fronts and troughs over and approaching Western Australia. No warnings to tell you about, but we do have a warning to tell you about as far as, as, far as uh, the uh, fire permit season goes. Um, the wind south, south westerly at 10 to 15 knots, but the fire information that we have for you, have the fire service has declared a fire permit period. Everybody in the south will require permits for vegetation burns, so check the TFS website for more information. Sorry about that glitch there. The forecast for tomorrow. Hobart, a cloudy day and 18 degrees. Jeeveston, a shower or two and 17. Bothwell, cloudy and 18 degrees. For Launceston, a shower or two, a top of 20. 17, the top for Devonport with a possible late shower. Cressy, a shower or two and 18. Burnie, a possible late shower, 16, the top. Strawn, a possible shower and 17. Curry, cloud clearing and a top of 16 degrees. And for the east, a bit showery for St Helens and Swansea, a top of 17, a possible shower for Orford and 17 degrees as well. The UV, moderate to high tomorrow right across the state. The three day forecast, Thursday firstly light showers over the north and east but mainly fine elsewhere. Light afternoon showers in the north on Friday increasing before extending statewide and showers easing on Saturday contracting to the west and the gusty north easterlies may bring a late shower to the north east. Possible shower in Perth tomorrow, cloudy over Adelaide, showers easing from Melbourne, a few showers also forecast for Canberra and Sydney. 